do you play faster pizzicato anyway? I see you, girl. What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and learning how to play pizzicato faster is so important for us bass players. It helps you with that up-tempo jazz tune, it'll help you with tricky passages in orchestra, and not having a fast pizzicato is really gonna hold you back. So in this video, we're going to take a look at developing fast pizzicato without the bow in the hand, with the bow in the hand, plus a secret hack that'll build speed in no time. There are two basic right hand orientations for me. They're what I call walking bass pizzicato, like this, kind of using the fleshy part of the finger, and speed pizzicato, where I'm kind of to the side, like a right angle. There are a lot of great approaches to the right hand in the jazz context, and I'll link up to an awesome video that my buddy Chris Fitzgerald did profiling 12 prominent jazz bass players. So for me, this walking technique works great up to about 120 beats per minute. And then I start to kind of feel like I'm, you know, using a little more energy than I need to. And I want to switch to this two finger pizzicato approach. And the key for this is develop this sort of like, I call it a walking motion, which might be a little bit confusing, but it's kind of like your fingers are here and then they go back and forth like this. This joint, it's kind of buckling a little bit. I'm not really thinking about it that much, but I'm making sure there's just like a little bend here and that these are a little bit more on the straight side. And I find that by developing this, I can pretty much play anything that gets thrown my way. Now, the way I develop this is in little bursts, take a break, and, and. I'm practicing alternating first finger and alternating second finger to start, so, and. And my finger is landing on the string below it. So it's kind of like a little uh, trampoline, sort of. It lands, and then it, it is ready to go back into action. I'm listening for consistency, and I like practicing this with a metronome. I did this a ton when I was younger. So starting 120 beats per minute and seeing how fast you can go while still staying clean, and then you can do eight. Mm, two, three, four. Uh, 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 that sort of thing. Practice on different strings, try it over scales and other passage work, and you will be off to the races with your pizzicato technique. When I'm holding the bow, I'm basically able to just use one finger. For me, that's the middle finger, so it does kind of look like I'm flipping the audience off, but that kind of works for me. And there are all these different subtleties when you've got the bow in the hand. You want to be able to play like a jazz sound sometimes, but you also want an orchestral sound. I've done a whole video on that, which I will link up to here. And if I'm really playing something fast, I try to put my bow down or put it in a quiver, which I need to do a video about. And that's kind of how that works when the bow's in the hand. Okay, now for that secret hack which is developing string crossings. It's one thing to develop speed on a single string, but music rarely stays on one string for very long, especially on the bass. I put together a worksheet you can download in the description below for string crossing exercises, and it uses one particular exercise that will take you a long way. It's what I call the rake. I'm not sure if there's another word for it, but for me, it's taking the same finger and raking down to the next string. And this will seem very pat your head, rub your stomach complicated at first, but once you get it down, you you'll find that it kind of flows, it'll get into your unconscious, subconscious skill set, and it will really help your game to take off. So the exercise that I like to do is starting with one, and then starting with two on the G string. And you just take each one of these cells and repeat it and start very slowly. A metronome is great too. And for the first day, that might be plenty. See if you can maybe get the speed up. And now you could do this. And alternating like one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, but you'll find that there is a point at which it doesn't really work. And so having this rake in your pocket or in your skill set is awesome. The second exercise is the same concept. We're just moving where we switch between the G and the D string. And all of these will provide slightly unique challenges, so don't get discouraged, and just a little bit every day will build the skill. And finally, we've got this pattern. And you can practice fingering notes, too. You could go, uh, and so on and so forth. Obviously, the other strings you can do, this exercise will take you a long way. We've got even more about pizzicato technique in this video got linked up to. Check it out and we'll see you over there. Thank <laughs> you.